everybody. Welcome to this very special episode of the Glen Rock Towncast. I'm so excited. I'm keeping this guy a surprise because I'm going to pop him in and then you'll see what I'm talking about. But we have the opportunity of talking to David Siegel, uh, lives right here in Glen Rock, and he's kind of a renaissance man. He, he runs a company called Three Day Blinds, which is window coverings. Uh, he's a realtor at Keller Williams Village Square in Ridgewood. Uh, he also is in a band. He's in a band called Milo. But one of the other things that he does, which is uh, we're going to talk about uh, extensively, <laughs> uh, he also is a, well, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you. I'm just going to bring him in and you guys, you guys will know exactly what he does. Uh, so please, I, I want to welcome David Siegel. David, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me, Fabio. How are you doing? Look at this guy. Look at him. You're looking at him, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, <laughs> what can I say? It's it, and and so we're going to talk a little bit about this. I'm going to change my background because I want people to understand. Look at that. All right, now we got that. We got the the Ocean's Eleven background. <laughs> so so, and I have to say, you're more handsome than George Clooney. Oh, uh, well, thank you, Fabio. Thank you. I got to say, I got to say, if it. both weren't married men, I would maybe take exception to that. But uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> happily married men. Too. Yeah, so I, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I, I happen to see I happen to see some of your posts on, uh, on on Facebook, and I said, "Wow, this guy!" You, I think you were promoting your your uh, realty company, and I'm like, I showed my wife. I'm like, "Who does this guy look like?" And she said, "Who does George Clooney look like? Really? <laughs> this is this is your man crush." Which it, I admit, I do have a man crush on George Clooney. He's living my life. <laughs> yeah, so, he's living a lot of people's lives, Fabio. <laughs> yeah, he certainly is. Uh, so, so I want to talk about that, but I want to go first back into your background. So, did you did you didn't grow up in Glen Rock, right? I did not. I grew up in Briarwood, Queens, in Jamaica. Uh, I lived there till I was um, oh thirteen years old. Then we lived in Little Neck. We moved out to the Burbs uh, when my brother started college. Uh, we needed different rooms because uh, we didn't get along so well back then. So we moved to Little Neck. <laughs> <He> does. <laughs> yeah, right. We, li uh, we, li we moved to Little Neck, Queens, and um, I lived there till I was uh, 22. was my first apartment on my own out in Long Island, Roslyn Heights, and um, got married, lived in Bayside, got married again, lived in Forest Hills. And uh, so I was a Queens boy until wife final wife, number three, um, met her, uh, Elaine is her name, and she lived in Jersey City. So um, we lived in Jersey City for a little while, then we lived in Englewood, and now we're here in Glen Rock for about a year and a half now. So, and it's, it's good that you said final wife. Yes, third and <laughs> final. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, now the important question is, you grew up in, in Queens. Now, are you a, a Mets fan or were you a Yank? Queens is historically uh, is a Mets fan. Bobby, I'll try to give you the short version. Right, um, I grew up a Mets fan. Um, I remember being in the car five years old when they won the World Series. I remember jumping up and down in the back seat with my friends. We were going to the Adventurers Inn in uh, Flushing, which was like an amusement center. And the Mets had won the World Series, so we're jumping up and down. That was 69, right? And then, of course, in 86. You're not talking about 86? What's that? You're not talking about 86? No, that was 69. 86. <laughs> <laughs> 86, I was actually at the parade. I was still a Mets fan. And then something odd happened. Um, my son, Sam, who's now 26, was born in 95. And he was born at Winthrop Hospital in Long Island. And when Sam... Well, Sam made his entrance into the world. I ran out into the waiting area and I let everybody know it was 10 fingers and 10 toes. And my dad said, what is he? I go, it's a boy, dad. You know that? He goes, I know that. He goes, what is he? Because my dad's a Yankees fan. Even though my oh. dad grew up in Astoria. My dad grew up in Astoria, somehow became a Yankees fan. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, wow. I go, you're doing this to me now? He said, right now. I said, all right, dad, if you put me on the spot, mm, okay, he's a Yankees fan. And on October 9th of uh, 2000, um, October 9th of 1995 is when I became a Yankees fan along with my son. So we had a pretty good run, I think, right? Holy cow. So he was born the year before Jeter joins the team. He, not only that, but while his mom, Robin, was a neighbor, she was only three days on neighbor, I was watching that Yankees uh, Mariners series, which was amazing. And I'm like, push, honey, push. And I'm looking up at the TV, you know? <laughs> and, um, and so I kind of got into that series. So it was odd that at, that's the time I became Yankees fan because I was very into that 
whole Mariano and Jeter thing and the guys. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and so it was very odd that that's when I uh, became a Yankees fan. So that's, uh, we had a pretty good run. And I've been to, of course, now a couple of parades since then with my son. <laughs> Just a couple, yeah. though. He's, he's, that's it. He's a Yankee fan for life. He's a Yankee fan. He thanks me to this day. He's like, Dad, I don't know what I've done. <laughs> if you made me go the other way, Dad, it would have been horrible. So, you know what? Your dad needs to talk to a lot of other people in Queens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so you grow up, you grow up in Jamaica and you, you move to all these places and you've been in Glen Rock for how long now? About a year and a half? Yeah. July of uh, 2000. So, you, 2000. You, moved, you moved to Glen Rock right in the middle of this, the pandemic. We did. We, um, it was nuts because it was the very end of April, beginning of May. We hadn't looked at a house in probably six months. Uh, we'd been looking, we had been looking on and off for two years. Um, as you know, I'm a realtor as well. And so every once in a while I would open up my app and look for myself. And we looked at, Oh God, I don't know how many houses we looked at. And, um, along came this one. We, uh, put in an offer on the spot. And our offer was accepted. And two weeks or so later, things went bonkers. And we probably would have spent about $50,000 or so more for the house had it been. Yeah, no. Wow. Yeah, very odd. Crazy wow. timing. So we're going to jump right into it. And then we'll go back to, to the, other, uh, the other three businesses. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go right into So how, now, obviously, you guys watching and listen, if, if, you're not, if you're listening and you're not watching, you need to go to the YouTube channel. And check this interview out because, uh, I mean, it's uncanny. When did you first find out that you look like George Clooney? Um, so my mom, may she rest in peace. My mom uh, was a very loyal uh, People magazine uh, reader. It was like her Bible. And uh, one day I walked over to, I, I went over to her home uh, in Little Mac. And I walk in and she's holding the magazine. She goes, I have something to show you, which if you know my mom, <laughs> could be anything right so she opens up the magazine like this and i'm like mom why am i in the center spread of people magazine <laughs> and she said i hope you're not upset i go i'm not upset mom but why am i in people magazine and she said i entered you in a celebrity lookalike contest and i said um for who she was well george Clooney, of course and you know up until then i had gotten it every now and then in, in right. odd but I never thought anything of it. The oddest thing that happened to me before this was um, I had worked for a, a company that was a vendor in the Hilton Hotel in Manhattan on 6th Avenue and 53rd or so. And uh, one day there was all this commotion out in front on 6th Avenue. And I went out to see what it was and George was shooting um, Michael Clayton. So the scene was Fabio. He was just getting in and out of a taxi. That was the whole shoot. That was it. And I was, I took my name tag off because I had an name tag because I was working in the hotel. I was dressed very similar similarly to him oddly enough wow and i'm standing against the wall of the hotel on the outside just against the stone wall and people start taking my picture and i'm putting my hands up i, I why are you taking my picture and they start aren't you his stunt double and i guess that's when i realized that i must have this uncanny resemblance to him and then of course this people magazine thing happens and then it just kind of blew up from there friends of mine started saying you know you should get an agent an agent for what like who, who's looking for me <laughs> <laughs> Why is anybody looking for me? They want him, not me. Well, maybe there's like lookalike work, you know, like stand in work and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And I know a little bit about movies and TV and stuff like that. I know that you don't have to look exactly like the person right. to be a stand in. You just have to have their height, height and weight, build. color and build. Right, right. So um, I just Googled um, celebrity lookalike agents. And sure enough, this guy, Ron, out of Boston, comes up. I call him. And he goes back and forth between New York and Boston. And he goes, why don't we meet for lunch? So we met for lunch a couple weeks later. And about a month later, I was in Vegas doing my first gig. And um, it took off from there. That was about 13 years ago. What was that gig? It was, it was, great. It was a great first gig. Um, it was, uh, I guess you would call it a high rollers party. So um, the, it was at the Wynn. And the Wynn had put together the party for the high rollers. And what's funny about this is like, we had this room for an hour and we were to walk around, take pictures, schmooze, that type of thing. It was myself, a Julia Roberts lookalike, Alicia is her name, and a Brad Pitt lookalike, Ryan. We worked together to this day, all these people, and, um, and a couple of others. And what's funny about it was like, you know, the hotel doesn't want these high rollers in this room. They want them out on the floor gambling. Gambling, yeah. 
So an hour gig turned into about a 15 minute gig. Because <laughs> the guy, <laughs> the, the casino host came over and goes, okay, you guys are done. Out, you're, we're, all, we're all done. We got, well, it's only 15. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. They took their pick. They're fine. They, 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 they want to get out and gamble. So my hour <laughs> gig was a 15 minute gig. I got paid wow. very well for that. I'm like, this is something pretty cool. And um, it just, it took off from there. I started um, promoting myself, uh, website, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. And to this day, I do everything myself. Um, I just kind of, you know, put a lot of stuff out there, social media and uh, Cameo and things like that. And a lot of the agents um, that have booked me uh, so far know me and they do call me and, uh, and for gigs and things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot. It's been a fun ride for sure. Now, listen, if you guys want to if you guys want to see what he looks like and see a lot of the work that he's done, it's David as Clooney, right? Dot yeah, D A V I D as A S Clooney dot com, and um, if you search David as Clooney in Facebook and Instagram, I'll come up there as well. Yeah, and it's amazing. I mean, I, I love you have a side by side picture of yourself. That little, it was almost that. What is half that? And half. What was that? Yeah. A thing of tides. They did that with uh, Ryan Gosling, I think. Yeah, I do. That, um, every once in a I, while, I find, I find trip over a picture of him that I hadn't seen before. And then I'll go looking in my own photos and I'll, I'll merge the half and halves. And I, I used to fool my mom, I, my wife to this day, sometimes look at these half and halves and she has no idea who's who. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to say the least, but I, I can go, I can go days without anybody saying anything, walk in the street, I'm all whatever. And then sometimes it's, it's nonstop. So it, it's, it's an odd thing. I, I can't really explain it or put my finger on it. It's just uh it's odd when it happens. I think I, I'm still not used to it. I don't think. Yeah, so. yeah. And so, so I'll share a little, a little bit. Of, and now, some, some of you guys listening, you know me, and you know some of the things that I've done in the past. And, mm. and years ago, uh, I'm in a diner <coughs> with my wife, and and this guy, he, he's looking at us, right? He's looking at me, and I said, "Well, listen, without being, you know, conspicuous, the guy, the guy over there looks just like Robert De Niro, and he keeps looking over here." So, of course, my wife just goes like this, who, <laughs> you know, so, so the guy gets up, he walks over and he introduces himself. It wasn't De Niro. It was, it Joe was Manuel. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who I ended up knowing, oddly enough, when you and I talked, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so he comes up and he says, hey, anybody ever tell you you look like Rudy Giuliani? Now, this was <laughs> early 2000s when he was at the height of his game. Yeah. And, you know, you take away this and, you know, you put the little glasses on, I put the Yankee hat on and, you know you give it a smile and I, I didn't, no one has ever said I did, but he saw it. Yeah. So he put me in touch with an agent and contacted him and said, just go and just take some pictures of yourself. So, you know, I dressed up in a suit, put the Yankee hat on, put an NYPD yeah. hat on, took some pictures. And all of a sudden you're out, you know, meeting with the president of the CEO of continental airlines. I'm going oh, to all yeah. these different, different yeah, yeah. parties, New York theme <laughs> parties. And it was so kooky that, that my favorite story is I'm driving, I have a Jeep Liberty at the time and I'm driving down the streets of New York where I've got my family with me. And, you know, there's usually that 59th street here in Midtown, 59th street, you go over and you get over to the, uh, the West side highway. So I'm, I'm making that cutoff and there were barricades. So I rolled it down. I'm like, Oh, listen, I just need to get to the, I didn't even finish my sentence. And the woman's like, okay, no problem. No problem. <laughs> Moves the barricade, and I'm driving through, and everybody's like, "What just happened?" It's, I don't know. I mean, maybe she thought it was the mayor, but why would I be driving a cheap Jeep, Jeep Liberty? <laughs> How great is that? Yeah, it's kookies, and yeah. and and the the thing is, you know, a lot of the people I'm sure you've met that I've met, they have to work at making themselves look like. Yeah, you and I had a brief discussion about that. So I have a lot of friends, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis, uh, Sinatra, you know, all of these icons, right? Elvis Presley, um, um, who we talked about, uh, Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, all these characters, right? That Obama, um, you know, Clinton and uh, um, Trump, they have so much makeup and hair to yeah. do and costumes that have cost them quite a pretty penny. Oh, yeah. And, um, uh, I, black shirt, suit, that, that's you it. Wear, you, 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 you wear the same thing you're wearing now when you go sell a house. <laughs> I, I don't do anything uh, different. Uh, the only time I've had makeup on 
is if I'm doing some kind of um, commercial advertising type of thing where there's a crew and, you know, there's a whole big setup and that type of thing. And that's when I'll go through makeup, whatever. But otherwise, um, no, this, this is it. What you see is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> and we had the chance, we had the chance of having a little soup at, uh, we at did. Again. And, and, and again, you know, you just, you have that, you have that face. I mean, it's, that's it. You have the face. Now I'm sure that, you know, when you're, when you, when you get into that character, there are certain expressions and things that you do that kind of, yeah. 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 I, I definitely studied him. Um, oddly enough. So in all these years, I think I had to be him. Like literally be him in a sense twice. Once was a, um, it was a very prominent New York attorney that wanted me at a lunch with a client and was trying to convince the client that she knew me and Amal. So she really wanted me to be him. And I was, I was a little uncomfortable about this, to be very honest with you. Um, that's something that I was not comfortable doing, but I did it. And um, to this day, uh, supposedly this attorney friend, this client um, ha- of the attorney has no idea that it wasn't him. Um, the other time I was roasting somebody and um, the husband uh, had asked me when I was roasting the wife for the 50th birthday, you know, can you do the voice, the mannerisms? And I studied him, so I, I can get by with it. But most of the time, it's just photos. So yeah. I don't, there's, no, there's very little I need to do. Um, so the commercials and things I've done is when I'll study up on him and do the mannerisms and things like that. Because I told you, I've traveled to Israel, Italy, Amsterdam, all over this country and uh, doing this. And sometimes it's, uh, so uh, one, of our, one of my biggest gigs was, uh, a Norwegian company, uh, I forgot what they did, big Norwegian company. There were, there were easily 1,500 people in this ballroom at uh, MGM. And, uh, you know, that was, it was huge. And I was a presenter. They were doing like an Academy Awards theme. So oh, I wow. saw Julia Roberts, the, the Brad Pitt, the Oprah, the Jack Nicholson, the, the uh, Ellen DeGeneres, you know, there was a bunch of us. So we all needed to be, quote, unquote, in character. So that was a lot of fun. But that's very rare that I need to, to have to do that. It's usually just photographs and things like that. Uh, all you really need to do is just, just to hold up a little espresso cup. I mean, that, that does it. If you go on his website. If you funny go on his website I've, done, I've done quite a few advertising campaigns and commercials that involve coffee. So all on the, the website, all on the Facebook and Instagram page. <laughs> what's, what's been the best international gig that you've done? I know we talked about a bunch, but... Of, of all the ones that you've done, what was your, your favorite, the, the best one that you've done? Favorite? That's really hard. So uh, two come to mind. Um, one would be uh, Israel uh, for a company called um, Espresso Club. They are a coffee. They make machines and sell the coffee. They, they give you the machine pretty much and they sell the coffee. The other one was um, uh, Cherko Cafe in, um, that was in Amsterdam. So Israel uh, was cool because that was a 5 a.m., 5, 5.30 a.m. Uh, call time. It was dark out. They were serving breakfast under a tent, that whole thing. They took this kitchen store and they turned it into a coffee uh, house for the day. And we shot all day long. And the crew and the owner of the company and the cast, our cast members and everything about that was just so professional and so well done. I think what really made it my favorite was that it literally blew up to a point where, and this is the uh, owner of the company, um, was hoping kind of that this would happen. In fact, the story goes that three days before my flight, it was still tied up in legal and they still didn't know if they were going to do the shoot or not because yeah. attorneys were for uh, espresso club were nervous that Nestle who uh, owns Nespresso uh. <laughs> and in the uh, CEO, the owner's mind, he's like, well, if that happens, isn't that a good thing? So, because it's more press. So we shoot the commercial, the commercial gets released. And I'm told, because I kept in touch with a lot of the Israeli people, Facebook, email, etc., Instagram. There was one point, Flavio, where if I had walked down the main drag in Tel Aviv, I would have been mobbed. <laughs> a la Clooney, you know, like, like if he really? was... I was up on billboards. I was in the newspaper. I was in magazines. Wow. The commercial was blasting all over Israel. Um, so it was, it was this huge thing. Um, th- and then I was in magazines here. I was in, um, uh, I have some things up on the wall around the house. So I was in, in touch magazine, coffee wars, it was called. And 
all these things. So th they were smart, but Nespresso was smarter because they tied it up in court for five years and it kept us from doing any sequels or anything like that. So both sides, I guess, kind of got what they wanted. P.S. They lost after three appeals. They had to pay all of Espresso Club's legal fees. So we won. I was never in any danger. I was just an actor in a commercial. But um, we never did any um, uh, sequels or anything like that. But the commercial was huge. And, um, and the other one was Amsterdam, a, a similar situation with the coffee company that um, used me in a commercial and was very, very big over there, too. So I like that stuff. I like the commercials. It's a lot of fun. Um, I like meeting the crew and the, the cast and the people I keep in touch with. And it's really, really nice. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Well, listen, I, I know that, you know, I, because I'm a, uh, you, you're, are you, are you screen actors guild? I am not. Okay. So I, I do get, I do get invites to, to screeners every once in a while. The next time I know that, that there's a Clooney movie that's out, that's coming out. Oh, next time I get a screener, I want to bring you with me. Did you ever meet him? Did you ever get a chance to meet him? Never met him. I um, I was in touch with his publicist um, a number of years ago. He actually, his name was Stan. Uh, Stan actually responded to my email, which I, I didn't expect that at all. He was filming Money Monster downtown years ago, and I wanted to try to arrange some kind of meeting where I can get a photo with him or something. And I don't know what I was thinking, that this was actually going to happen, but of course it <laughs> Uh, well, I was like, no, I don't think I can arrange that. But if anything changes, I'll let you know type of thing. My um, cousin was the CEO of a big company uh, years ago. And her name is Laura. And Laura sat next to George at the White House Correspondence Dinner under uh, one of Obama's terms, I think his first term. And she sat literally next to George and took out her phone and showed him my stuff, my website and everything like that. So um, I know he knows about me, but like I said, he's had a stand-in for 30 years now that does all that stand-in work. So I'm small time compared to <laughs> anything else that's out there, I guess. So, well, yeah. I'll tell you what, next, next time I get one of those screeners and, I, and, I, and I'm able to get the invite, I will, yeah. I will bring you because I would love to see not only fun. the expression on his face, the expression on your face, everybody else's face, and then make yeah. sure we get a nice photo op with him. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Right, so, so now, now let's talk a little bit about your uh, your businesses. So you, you, yeah. you've got Keller Williams, Village Square. Keller Williams, How Village Square in Ridgewood. I've been doing that for about three years now. Um, I would say it's, um, it's part-time, oddly enough, because when I started, it was full-time. And then uh, I found it very, very difficult to... I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit, and I, I like to be busy, and I like to have a routine, and... You know, to be busy from eight or nine in the morning to six at night doing real estate activities, all of my realtor friends out there all know this, I'm sure. And they're all wonderful at, at their jobs because they can, they can do this and stick to their, their routines. I found it very um, odd, difficult, I guess, to, to stay busy, if you will, the kind of busy I like to be, which is always doing stuff. And so I, I, um, a friend of a friend knew uh, someone at a company called Three Day Blinds which is window treatments. And I had grown up in the business, um, window treatments. Yeah, my dad had a home decorating and design center out in Fort Washington when I lived in Queens for many years, wow. um, since 1961, actually. Oh, wow. And I grew up in that business. And um, so I, I took some appointments here and there for the company. And I was very successful at it, of course, because I had done it all my life. And they started giving me more and more appointments. So my boss said, if you like, I can keep you busy all day long. And I like the sound of that. <laughs> so real estate, real estate was kind of kind of flip-flopped organically. You and I, when we conversed the first time, I said everything in my life, including my third wife, because I had vowed never to be married again after two. Um, but that happened very organically. And um, here we are almost eight years later, married, of course, and uh, very, very happy. And um, so everything happens very organically in my life. And when three-day blinds became full-time and, and real estate became more part-time. I didn't fight it. I just went with it. And I'm busy with both those jobs. So it's wonderful. That's awesome. So t tell me a little bit about three-day blinds. Three-day blinds is a company out of um, Irvine, California. And they've been doing this 44 years. And uh, it is shop at home. We do not have storefronts. Uh, we have a factory on the West Coast that makes all the product too. So I go to people's homes three to four times a day and I consult with them. I'm um, a design consultant, obviously. And I, 
Um, uh, many people in Glen Rock and the surrounding areas have used me, and thank you for that, everybody. And uh, it's been wonderful. I, I put uh, in Glen Rockers, I'll once or twice a month put a post in there about window treatments, and people will call me, and I'll go locally and take care of uh, the neighborhood, which is nice. So uh, it's been great. It's been wonderful all around. So I, I am very, very thankful and very grateful. Is there is there a website? And this and you're talking about like curtains, shades, whatever you need. Yeah, anything for windows. Any, yep, anything for windows. Um, Any kind of window. Yeah, yeah. So um, any, any window, uh, specialty products, angles, th difficult shapes, things like that. We do everything yeah. from well, custom. mini blind all the way to shutters and drapes. So we do it all and everything in between. Um, is there a website that people can see some of the stuff that, uh, that yeah, they do? Yeah, 3dayblinds.com. And uh, if, you, uh, if you Google 3 Day Blinds, then David Siegel, S-I-E-G-E-L, it'll take you right to my actual page within the company. Oh, and, nice. So, yeah, so uh, it's, um, it's fantastic. I, I, never, I never really got out of window treatments because I had been doing it for 30 years at one time. And, of course, I did it in my own so, and for friends and family members all the time. So I never stopped doing it. It was just, I never really, again, organic things have a way of just happening and coming back into your lap. And when it happened and for such a great company like that, I, I just jumped at the opportunity. So. Well, that, and that's the best when it happens organic, like, like you had no desire. You never even thought about being a George Clooney lookalike. That was completely organic. That I have a funny story for you, Fabio. So uh, one of the things we didn't talk about, I was a recruiter in my former life. I used to place computer programmers in the technology bill many years ago. And I had a boss that was a little psycho. I learned a lot from him, but a little, little missing a few screws. And one day when I was a trainee, uh, myself and maybe three other trainees were called into his office. And he had one of those little toys on his desk. You know, the square pegs and the round pegs. Oh, yeah. and the Stars yeah. and you have a hammer, you hammer it into the thing, right? And uh, he takes this uh, square peg and he puts it over the round hole with the little hammer. And he goes, hey, David, come here. Try to get this square peg in the round hole. I'm like, Larry, you can't. He's like, try. I'm like, all right. He yelled at me. I'm hammering. Like, of course, Larry, the square peg doesn't go into the round hole. And then, of course, he goes around the room to the three other guys and nobody can get the square peg in the round hole, right? So he goes, okay, you guys are done. Nobody can do this, right? We're like, no, Larry, you can't get a square peg in a round hole. He reaches under his desk and he takes out a sledgehammer, real sledgehammer. And he puts the square peg on the round hole. And with a big giant motion, like you're at a carnival hitting that thing with the belt, he slams the peg into the round hole and everything shatters. The desk shatters. <laughs> I think he's known in the building for this. Like they have desks on standby. Like every, every couple of months when he trains new people because they had a desk in the office in no time flat. And of course this thing, and he made his point. He's like, that's how you make a placement, right? That's how you get someone to hire somebody. If they're not perfect, the job or whatever. And, um, it always stuck with me, but it, 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 it annoyed me more than it, more than I was impressed with it because like, I don't really feel that that's how you do life. I know that that's how a lot of people make a lot, a lot of money. And I did very well as a recruiter, but it was, it was, that wasn't a job I ever loved. Because I like the personal contact, and I was always on the phone and things like that. Yeah. But um, so yeah, so I, I think of that because it's a total antithesis, I think, of the way like I run my life. So it's kind of interesting. So how, how long were you doing that for? I did that from ninety five, ninety six until uh, nine eleven. Actually, oh, I, wow. certainly wasn't, I certainly wasn't going to stay in something I didn't like after everything happened, and I knew that you know when was the next time we were ever going to make a placement in that city, you know, with everything on. So, um, that was, that was, that was it for me. I was done. So. Yeah. I don't plan. That's a, that's a tough business. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so here you are, your real estate, uh, and we're going to shout out your, uh, your website for the, for Keller Williams too. How can, how can people find you if they're looking either buying, renting, they want to sell, how can they find yeah. you? We can, uh, the best. So we do have, we do have a Keller Williams site. Um, and again, uh, Keller Williams, um, Village Square Realty, David Siegel into Google will actually take you right to my Google reviews page. So you'll be able to see the reviews on the people that have helped buy and sell. Um, so you can just Google is the best way to do things these days because I think the website's kind of convoluted with dashes and hashtags and all that stuff. So <laughs> Google, um, if you Google Keller Williams Village Square Realty, David Siegel, it'll take you right to my uh, 
my Google uh, reviews and, and, and that page. So you can find me there. So you've got real estate, you've got three day blinds, you've got David is Clooney. Yeah. And we're not done yet. enough. We're not done. I know. But wait, not, that's not that's not all. I had to be busier, Fabio. <laughs> so tell so, me a little bit about your, your your fourth adventure. My cousin George, who lives right here right well down the block, actually, a few blocks away in Ridgewood, oh, um, cool. is a drummer. And uh, my wife has always been on me to learn the drums because I, I played the steering wheel. I play the dining room table, of course. When you have <laughs> stuff. We're all great at the steering wheel. We're all great at the dining room right, table. Right, right. But sitting down at a drum kit, I don't know if you ever tried, is a whole different experience. Completely. I go over to Georgie's house one day, and I'm sitting there, and I, I there's just nothing happening. I can't get the feet going with the hand. It, it's really hard. And... Um, he said something to me, I think, like, oh, Elaine tells me you sing. And I'm like, yeah, I sing. Like, I sing, like, The Cure, Depeche Mode, U2, The Smiths, like that era. Like, all of that 80s and new wave stuff, right? And he goes, why don't we get a band together? And I didn't know he was serious. And he was on me for weeks. I would get a text, you know, hey, mother, you know, like, hey, you know, like, he, he teased me. And, and, hey, hey, you know what, Face, why don't we have the band yet? And, so he was on me for this, and I realized that one of my realtor friends, Raj, plays uh, bass and guitar. And then we put out in Glen Rockers that we were looking for a lead guitarist, and we found one, Emilio. And we formed a band called Milo. We rehearsed at George's once a week, and we hope to be playing uh, somewhere near you, as they say, near you, um, <laughs> in the coming uh, weeks and months. And uh, one of the things we definitely want to do is play in like, the outdoor spaces around Glen Rock and Ridgewood, in the spring and summer. So be awesome. we should be getting into high gear very soon, because if we're going to do that, we better get our act together. Right. So, yeah. but that's been a lot of fun. It's been at 57 years old to start a band. Um, <laughs> you're never, it's never too late Fabio, to do anything. Right. So never too late. Absolutely. Hey, look, I started this thing last year, you know, 58 years. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and do you guys have a website yet? We do not. We All right. So not. Milo, Keep an eye on Milo. M I L O, named after George's dog Milo. So, do you bring? Is the dog still alive? Dog is still alive. He's uh, he's we we every time I go over that house for rehearsal, he comes to the door and he drags himself. He's like 15, 16. He's uh, oh boy, um, uh, a Springer Spaniel, beautiful dog, beautiful coat, and um, George's uh, daughters Penny and um, um, oh God, Sadie. Um, we think we all think he's going to live forever because he just goes on and on and on. And we named <laughs> it in honor of Milo. So hopefully I think we'll do like a, a graphic of Milo's uh, beautiful face. And maybe that'll be the, the, uh, the front of the drum, the bass drum. Front of the drum. Yeah. Put it on the bass. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And, and if anybody, if anybody wants to do a party or they want to have, can they, they can, they can book you, right? If they want to do the 80s and 90s movies. and all that genre, the Cure, the Peshmo, the Smiths, uh, REM, especially Green Day. We do a lot of Green Day. If you want to book Milo, just find me. Like I said, find me in any of those ways. David Siegel, S I E T E L. You can message me on Facebook. You can find my Cooney page, the Realtor Web. However, you want to get in touch with me, ask Flavio. <laughs> get in touch with us. You can book us. Uh, we we are doing um we are very excited about playing out and about and um you know we we'd be we'd be thrilled to play any kind of local parties or or events and things like that so definitely be in touch with the short well hopefully hopefully we could book you you know once once everything opens up again and spend yeah. some book you right here <coughs> Glen Rock, just play you know play any of the outdoor venues yep that's what we're going to do yeah we like that kind awesome. of thing. So, yeah it should be exciting then as a bonus you can get a picture with the lead singer as a bonus, uh, when we are between <laughs> sets or before or after the show, uh, usually get a pretty penny for those Quinny pictures, but uh, no charge for uh, those uh, in the town cast. So come Write on up. Write that down. Write Take that down. Any lead singer and uh, George Quinny look like David Seal. <laughs> Any, anybody that's listening or watching this right now. Yes. All right. That's that's quite an offer. You, you're going to get, Absolutely. you know. No charge. Thousands of people. <laughs> no charge. No charge. <laughs> All right. Well, David, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, and, and also, if someone wants to book you as George Clooney, they can do that. Yes. Right? 
they're having a so, party. Um, the website, uh, davidascooney.com. Um, there's a, um, a contact uh, tab, which will come directly to me. Um, you can email me at info at davidascooney.com. Um, and so those are the ways to do the um, Cooney bookings. And of course, if anybody needs window treatments, contact me as well. And if you're buying or selling real estate, I'm happy to help. And those, the real estate and the blinds thing and the window treatment thing go hand in hand. People buy a home, they need window treatments. Uh, they sell a home, they may need the windows to look real pretty. So that kind of thing, that just happened, like I said, very organically. And it's a good thing it did because they really go hand in hand. So, so listen, if, if you're selling a house, buying a house, renting a house, you want to, you want to rent the house, you want to rent your, out your house, contact David. Uh, if you're looking for window treatments, or like you said, if you're just looking to, you know, if you're going to be renting space and you want to redo the inside, yep. contact him. He'll help you. He'll help you not only redo the windows, but also help you list the property and help you sell or sure. the property. And Fabio, we do one little, one little tiny bathroom window to 50 to a hundred windows, no job yeah. too big or too small. So good, good. Yeah. I may actually be calling you because I'm okay. As I'm looking around, yeah, there's some work that needs to be done here. <laughs> and listen, if you guys, if 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 you're you're watching this, you're listening to this, and your your wife, your girlfriend, your your boyfriend, your husband, if you if if they have a crush on George Clooney and you want to have a special party, a special event, a 50th, a 60th, a 40th, and a 70th, whatever it is, what better surprise than to have this guy come walking in the door and have a, a, a photo op for for your significant okay. other and for all their friends. That's a blast. Yeah. And if you go to cameo.com and you put a uh, George Clooney into the search bar, I'm the only one that comes up. There's no other George Clooney look like currently on cameo. And of course, George is not on cameo. So you got me. So. That's awesome. There you go, David. Thank you so much for sharing your, uh, thank you for having me. Man. This was a blast. A blast. Uh, and I look forward to, I look forward to hearing Milo. Keep it, keep me posted. I hope you guys are ready to play out. Uh, we'll, we'll help promote it and we'll get your name out there and uh, we'll definitely come see you. Thanks very much, man. I appreciate it very much. All right. Don't go away. I'm going to sign off. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for, for listening. Thanks for watching. And if you did listen, you have to go on the YouTube channel. You have to, you have to watch this and make sure you subscribe, make sure you like we're on, we're on Instagram and Facebook and all that fun stuff. So, uh, and share it with your friends and family. I mean, we're here to, to promote and support one another. We're here to promote and support local businesses and, uh, and we're definitely here to support and promote uh, George Clooney lookalikes. And, and you've got the <laughs> number one George Clooney lookalike in the world right here, right here in Glen Rock, which is pretty cool. All right. Be well, everybody.